Hey guys, welcome once again to the PHP 101 screencast with me Phil from BHSO Web Design. Now in today's screencast, what I thought I'd do is just take you through some of the tools that I like to use um, on a day to day basis whether it be when building websites. Um, also just take you through some of the sites I use for to look up bits of information because you know, end of the day, you can't remember it all. And also I thought I'd show you what else I use uh, when I'm making these screencasts. Right, firstly let's go with the screencasts. What I use is this, a piece of software called Cam Studio. It's open source and free. Now, uh, Cam Studio is pretty good. Uh, it has a lossless uh, codec available for it. So you can then uh, record in HD quality. Uh, it can record full screen. Now I choose to shrink my screen size down um, just so the file size is a bit uh, smaller, the text is a bit uh, clearer on the screen, but I mean you know I normally run full screen on my screen, you know, full resolution, um, it's quite massive. But it's a simple little piece of software, um, here it is running just down here, and so it just tells you how long it's running for, codec you're using dimensions recording that so on you can sign keyboard shortcuts you can um, choose where to record directly to a flash file or a video file but that's what I use it's free and it hasn't done me anything wrong so far touch wood right then what I do is that will now kick out an AVI file now screencasts uh, or podcasts have to use a, a different file type, um, usually uh, M M4V, yeah, M4V, which is the file type that Apple recognises as a podcast video file. Now I use to do to I then obviously have to convert it, and the way I convert it is I use this. It's a product called Air Video. Now. It, you can't just get the PC version of this um, there is also an associated app that you need for the, that you have to get for the iPhone or iPod or um, iPad um, there might be an Android version as well but I'm not 100 sure on that one now the apps only two pounds or 199 to buy the server is free okay now the server if I'll show you, it's just here. Just sits there running and you take to watch a folder. Now, the original idea of this software is you can stream uh, videos, files that are on your computer through to your iOS device um, over your Wi Fi. Uh, also, you can do it um, over the internet as well. Uh, it will convert, live convert the video file as you're playing, um, but then you can also convert it to keep it for later on. Now, the reason you need the app as well as the server is because to control the server, you have to have the app. Now, what I do is I'll get my video file when I've finished, then tell go onto my app, uh, select for it to be go to the video file, and tell it to convert it. It takes well, not very long to be honest. Um, depends on how long the video is, uh, what resolution it is. An average, it could take about. 15 20 minutes, um, it's enough time for me just to uh, shut down everything that I've been using when I'm making these screencasts. But yeah, then obviously, then I've got my video file made. Then I have to put it somewhere so you can download it. Okay, now I use a hosting service called Just Host, uh, it's a very, very good service. Uh, it's £2.95 a month, it's on a, a promo at the moment. It is, you get a free domain name with that as well, uh, unlimited space, unlimited transfer, but then of course it's a fair usage policy, yeah, fair, bandwidth and disusage policy, policies, basically fair usage, um, lots of things. I run my site from there, um, and I actually, I know it's a bit naughty to me, but I use my site's server to also host uh, my screencast videos. Yes, I know some of you are probably going to be there jumping saying, oh, what if you've got a load of people downloading it? 
it's going to slow your site down. Well, you know, I could either buy another server or I could keep going with this and just, I mean, it, the servers are pretty quick. It just seems to cope without much issues, okay? And I can get a pretty fast uh, download rate. Now, once you've made that and you've uploaded your video, you then have to, uh, for iTunes, uh, well, for starters with iTunes, you have to register to um, allow you to um, broadcast uh, podcasts. Let me just get rid of this little plugin that I had installed a while back. If you go to the iTunes store, open the internet's going to run nice and quick for me at the moment. It might not. We'll soon find out. Okay, then if you then go to where is it? There you go, podcasts. And then under podcasts, on the right hand side on the UK store, this is, you've got to submit the podcast option here. Okay. What it'll do is it'll ask for your podcast feed URL. Now it's it's pretty much basically like an RSS feed which you may or may not be used to but you have to put specific iTunes tags in there now there is um, a really quite comprehensive help section plus if you google there is lots of help out there from people telling you how to do this kind of thing put it in uh, the URL of the feed though submit it iTunes or Apple shall I say would then look at the video decide whether uh, you know, it's a duplicate podcast or something and whether to accept it. it normally takes about 24 to 48 hours and then when you'll get an email through saying you're accepted great uh, you have to have one or two video files there available ready for, to start it off with or audio files even sorry if you're making audio podcasts uh, and then yeah they'll accept it um, one of the things though is iTunes won't give you usage data okay um, you won't know how many times your podcast been or, or screencast or whatever has been downloaded you don't know how many people subscribe or anything like that so what I've chose to do and I've heard about doing this off other people as well is I use FeedBurner to um, act like a, an in-between uh, I could go in between between iTunes and my uh, my site what it does is it takes my RSS feed plays around with it a bit and then forwards it onto iTunes then when, what it's done by playing around with it though it gives me us usage data okay so when someone goes to download my podcast they click it goes via feed burner it registers all oh, this person's downloaded this and adds it to my counter I can look at all my stats and how many people have downloaded it over a period of time and so on and so forth um, also you can also supply this feed so then people can just directly subscribe um, through their own RSS reader uh, feed reader so they don't even need to go to iTunes so that's basically the simple may seem not complicated some people may think but those are the simple things that I use for when making these screencasts I do the screencasts because I like it okay I'm um, may or may not have a lot of viewers I don't care I'd like to think that someone somewhere may find it useful the information I put out there if they do that's great that's brilliant I, you know my job's done okay so if you want to do a podcast that's one way to do it there is other ways to do it but that's the way I choose to do it anyway moving on tools there's various tools that I like to use. Uh, some of them are applications. There's a couple of what I call tools, but they are actually websites which have certain bits of features on them that I use quite a lot as well. So start off with, I run a local server called WAMP. Now you may have heard me mention this many a time. Here we go, WAMP server. I'm running version two at the moment. I'm not quite sure what version they're on at the moment. Let's have a look. Uh, 2.2D. Some point two behind, but you know, it's no biggie. 
Uh, there is various different versions of it. There's a uh, WAMP is the Windows version, which it stands for Windows Apache MySQL PHP Server. Oh yeah, I'm glad I remembered that. Even though it's probably written here somewhere, but oh well. Uh, there is a version for Mac called MAMP, which is Mac Apache MySQL PHP Server. Um, and there is various different versions of the same kind of thing for Linux. Even though Linux, it's kind of easier to install uh, an Apache server and PHP than it is to do it on Windows or uh, Mac, you know, separately kind of thing. But there is a version of this WAMP for Linux users. Don't be afraid; it's all good. Right. So, listen. I've got it running here. Um, if I click on this, you can see I can. Uh, put the servers online or just completely run it local. I say it's got me Apache, PHP, and MySQL. Um, if I go to my directory, all I've got to do is just create a folder like you would on any other site, put your folders in, and there you go. Um, in fact, if it runs on a local host, if I just get rid of that bit there. There you go. So this is what you get. It's all the extensions it comes with in this version. Uh, it comes with PHP MyAdmin installed on there um, and a basic PHP info settings as well. Gives you a list of all your projects you got there and so on things, bits and pieces. I like it. It is so quick, simple and easy to set up. You know, I don't know why people would set it up individually. Now, just to point out, it isn't necessarily designed for your own hosting platform. Okay, it's designed basically really for development purposes to run a local server on your machine, so you can test your PHP scripts, test your MySQL, uh, your JavaScript, whatever. Basically, full-on test your site before you put it up on the internet, put it live, and then find out half it's broken. Okay. But that's the web server I like to use. Next though, I've got a couple of uh, different uh, text editors I like to use. One of them is called Notepad++. This site's a bit big unfortunately for my screen resolution I've got at the moment. Oh well. Now Notepad++ is a lot like, well I say a lot, it's a bit like um, uh, a Mac um, text editor called Coda. Now the reason why I say it's a like is because it has a built-in um, FTP plugin. So you can FTP to your site and live edit a page in your text editor. Okay. Uh, it stores all your password and everything so all you need to do is literally just click a button and you're connected. In fact I'll just quickly show you if I call it up wonder what I've got left open. Uh, I'll just cancel that at the moment. Oh here we go. Here's my feed. <laughs> you can see here the this is the uh, RSS feed which is just an XML page for my podcasts. There we go. Anyway, I'll close that. So if I go to plugins notepad plus plus FTP there we go. Now I can now Connect to my server, and there we go. I'm in my site now. Okay, I can go into the page, into the folder. Oh no, that's not what I want. Uh, yeah, I'll just double click that, I download it, and there we go. I'm interested in it. As soon as I save, it'll re upload. So you can technically edit it live from your site with no issues. Notepad++ though can sometimes be uh, a little bit heavy. But then there is another program I love, I'm really in love with. For those of you who have seen my screencast before, you know that I still mean to buy this. I'm still running the testing version. Sublime Text 2. It is brilliant absolutely brilliant uh, text editor this 
it's plain, simple, clean. There's uh, no distraction mode where it um, basically switches off all your desktop surround and just goes full screen. Um, but yeah, it's to buy. It's uh, da -da 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 -da. fifty nine dollars to buy. Uh, what they do is though they license you, not the the computer. So then basically you can install it uh, if you've got a PC and then a laptop you can install it on both use the same code you won't have a problem okay it's because it's licensed as per user rather than as per machine I really seriously suggest you download this give it a good try you will not regret it it's a brilliant text editor you can get plugins for it to do bits and pieces but as a simple plain text editor it's brilliant so Next thing, a uh, lot of the sites I've started doing nowadays, I've been using this, the good old WordPress. I've been using it as a back end on a few of the sites that I use nowadays, um, for a C as a CMS, um, mainly because a lot of people would have used a WordPress site and not realised it. You know, uh, the, there's constantly being worked on there is a phenomenal amount of information out there to support you in building your templates uh, there's a crazy amount of plugins so if you don't want to hand roll a bit of code you can possibly find a plugin for what you want to do you know whether it be from wanting to show a Twitter update on your page uh, all the way through to um, a shopping cart you know there's bound to be a plugin for it. If there isn't, you can so easily hand roll a plugin yourself. They're very easy to make. There's a quite comprehensive uh, support system for Word from WordPress themselves, because they what they want more plugins. You know, they want people to be writing these plugins for them, so they can come available for everyone else to then use. It's brilliant. It's clean and simple. Nice simple back end for your client to use um, you can teach a client to use WordPress back yeah, the back end of WordPress I'd say in less than five minutes I, I, I can't say enough about it I used to be against it but I'm a convert what can I say anyway so that's what I use for my CMS now from a CMS to CSS that was a really crap link. I'm sorry about that. Um, CSS is, well, brilliant. Okay? Now, I'm guessing when you build a web, if you've built any sites before, you've come across CSS, you've used CSS. But CSS has a few shortfalls in the form of you have to write certain lines of code over and over and over again or you know you may specify color in a, C in a CSS file in 15 different places then your client comes along and goes I want to change that color you've then got to go and find all 15 different places now there has been a thing a, set, a series of things released um, to patch these shortcomings these are known as preprocessors you've probably heard this word being bounced around the internet loads they really are the in thing at the moment and they're in thing because they're good they're useful they cut down time it takes to produce uh, work at crazy amounts okay now the one I choose to use is SAS which if you've been listening to um, other podcasts or screencasts you've probably heard this to death the reason you heard this to death is because this is good SAS is brilliant okay now it runs on uh, Ruby so if you're a Windows user uh, you need to get hold of uh, Ruby uh, if you're a Mac user from OS X I think I think from the original OS X it came with Ruby. Linux comes with Ruby as well. 
and you install it as a gem by all you gotta do is open up your Ruby console type in this code or you can even copy and paste it in and it install it it's great what SAS allows you to well there's two versions of SAS sorry there's SCSS and SS SASS what it does is you write your script in SAS then what it'll do is it then converts into CSS now on their home page they've got a couple of examples of things you can do um, they're showing the SCSS to start off with now SCSS is the easiest one to learn out of two because it is basically CSS it's CSS with a few little added extras okay so you can use uh, variables now if you do PHP you or any kind of scripting you're used to variables <coughs> now you can see in their example in a variable they've called string blue they've set the color of blue now what you do is you go for your code instead of keep having to write this hash code you just put string blue then what it is to happen is when it uh, processes it into CSS it will then put that hash code in you may be thinking what's the point in that say your client comes along and goes I don't want blue anymore I want this shade of red you could either go through and change all these hash codes here or you change it here once change it there once you let us do its magic and it will change it everywhere it appears in the CSS um, same thing is with SAS but SAS is different because you cut out a lot of stuff you're typing a lot less you see the difference with SCSS it is basically CSS you've got this uh, braces you've got the semicolons at the ends and things like that in SAS it's bye bye to all that reason is SAS is white space dependent so as you can see the here they've declared uh, the um, tag or in this case the class for this uh, uh, bit of code uh, then they've put it on a new line and tabbed it in once okay once you've tabbed it in you then put your code SAS is intelligent enough to realize that here is your class your tag whatever it is here is the CSS of what you want to do to it so when it compiles it compiles like that it's great okay um, you can now only do variables um, you can do nesting so you can see here um, they've got a table the H1 uh, table divided line number I can't think what that is they're off the top of my head um, or table divided class of LN uh, table class of H1 um, they've typed it like this it converts it to this so you can see where you've not had to retype this it's done it for you you've saved yourself a bit of time, bit of effort it's all good okay also the nesting you can cut down how much you type in in say the fonts you know they've shown an example here so instead of having to type font family, font weight, font size you just type font like this and then you just type family, weight, size and the information you want and it does it for you and SASS same thing applies it's just an extra tab over to declare a nesting oh. hopefully I'm not going too slow hopefully I'm not boring you <laughs> but yeah great. it's a great thing check it out okay check it out start using SCSS it's going to be easy for you to learn because I said it is basically CSS just a bit more intelligent when you feel a bit more comfortable with that take a look at SASS I'm sorry about the noise outside but I have some idiots living around near by, by me but what can I say uh, anyway where was I yeah check out the SASS 
Uh, it's not much different. You'll find it so much quicker and easier to type. Um, I've typed it that much nowadays that I find myself forgetting to put the semicolons, the braces, stuff like that, if I'm just typing raw CSS. <laughs> it's come that fixed in my mind. Okay? Now, SAS on its own is good. It's amazing, it's brilliant, it's what everyone's been wanting for years. But it can be made even better by using this compass. Now, compass is a framework that uses SAS. Okay, um, you still type the same code as you would with SAS and all that stuff. What it does though is it adds a few little elements. Okay, you can tell compass to watch your SAS files and then what it does is whenever it detects an alteration as in you saved the file it will automatically go and then compile the file into CSS okay um, so it's useful for that aspect to start with but then also when you get it it comes in with a load of helpers uh, mix-ins and bits and pieces lots of stuff you can import in so um, if I just look at the CSS3 there's a mix-in for all these items so let's have a look at the border radius one okay now normally you have to type in for border radius the WebKit's uh, prefix and the Mozilla prefix get rid of that now all you need to do now is import it so it knows that you want to use it and then you just type in a border radius let me go uh, here we go border uh, include border radius blah 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 then what it does it takes it and puts in the webkit prefix the mozilla the khtml and non prefixed version puts it all out churns it all out for you so you're not having to sit there and type in all those prefixes repeating yourself over and over you type it once it does it for you okay um, there's other ones it does things like paste opacity um, if I remember correctly uh, opacity it will actually do the um, windows um, prefix for you as well uh, the alpha uh, filter let me just check on that I don't want me talking crap so there you go you can see here they've imported compass CSS3 uh, they've put in what the opacity they want it to be by using the plus opacity that it churns out this code for you so it's translated it into the Windows version for you or well, the Microsoft uh, yeah, IE version for you but then it also puts in the normal version it just saves so much time you don't have to keep thinking about all these prefixes you're not there going oh I've made the version for WebKit, I've made the version for Mozilla oh crap what's the filter um, transform for IE it does it for you okay so Compass and SAS paired together is makes your life easier. They're both immensely powerful tools, and yeah, it's great. I can't highly suggest it enough. Download it, get it. Okay. Um, while we're still on the SAS thing, here is a site called CSS to SAS. Dot heroku dot com. This guy, uh, I'm guessing. Oh, here we go. Created by. Uh, I'm not going to even try and insult the guy and try and pronounce his name. What this allows you to do is, you can take some CSS. I'm, I'm coming to this site in a moment, but I'll just show you. Uh, let's just copy that. Go back to here. Paste it in then what you can do is you can then tell it to convert it for you <laughs> ok 
okay don't know why it's just come up with that so what it does is it'll take your CSS and it converts it into SCSS or converts it into SAS what this means is if you've got an older site or a site you're currently halfway through and you're using CSS but you now decide you want to try these preprocessors out, but they're thinking, you know, I've already typed two, three hundred lines of code. What this site allows you to do is you put in your CSS, convert it, whack it into your SAS file, done. You're not there having to retype out your entire script to redo it. This will just do it for you. So it's just a little tool that I found the other day. And I've been using quite a, a lot since. Okay, uh, so yes, CSS to SAS. If you search Google for that, it comes up as the first link. But here's the web address for you: it's CSS to SAS dot Heroku dot com. Useful tool, especially if you want to start learning how to use this thing. <laughs> right now. I know I'm still on CSS, but I'm off the preprocessors now. Score! Right. Um, other tools. Yes. I feel like I'm rambling on now. It's a shame. Another tool I use. Gradients. Now, gradients are great. They're brilliant. But they can be such a pain in the ass to get right. Now, I come across this. Uh, I was told about this tool. Uh, or site should I say, in a, another screencaster heard about this. This is the ultimate CSS gradient generator by Codezilla. This is brilliant. <laughs> it really is. Um, what you do is, it's got some presets. Okay, if you like the look of a gradient it's got here, select it. And there you go, just by magic, it's giving you all the CSS code that you need you copy and paste that into your CSS job done how easy is that let's just try that one try that loads of presets but then what you can also do is change the colors and that gives you a nice color picker I'm going to nice strong the color let's go for that blue uh, let's Move that color stop. Uh, I wonder if you can remove, delete it. Yeah, let's delete that color stop there. Move that along a bit. And let's uh, change the color of this to, I don't know. There you go. Bit of a yucky gradient, but you know, in the day, there you go. Here it goes. It's already created your CSS code. You can change it to a diagonal one. You can make it radial, whatever you want. You can change the size. I guess that's possibly just the size of the preview. You can also select that you want an IE version. It puts the IE code in. There we go. All done. Copy and paste that. Put in your CSS. Job done. There's your gradient. I've never known such a quick an easy way to make a gradient. I love it. <laughs> okay, uh, I know I'm saying I'm loving a lot of things, but you know, I can't go back to typing old-fashioned uh, gradients, trying to work it all out for yourself, working out all the color stops. I mean, there is so many presets here. It's even got to transparency and stuff like that. That you. you you can possibly find the gradient you need already made for you so you don't need to uh, make it yourself okay but um, yeah check it out but I mean you know you can either play around with a couple of sliders click on a few things or type all this code to make this one gradient work in all the browsers which would you rather do? Think about it. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So that's the ultimate CSS gradient generator, and that's uh, available at codezilla.com uh, slash gradient dash editor. If you search uh, for 
Colorzilla and Google it'll bring it up but I will include a lot of these links in the show notes on my site okay so if you want to find any of these things the links will be available eventually next CSS3 please now I've briefly showed it before CSS3 has introduced a lot of amazing new tools um, to web designers I know CSS is a very front end I've just realized this has been a very front end podcast so far I apologize but there we go um, it's laid with a lot of amazing new tools okay now you may struggle to know uh, how to get something to work you may struggle to know what's available in what um, what all the prefixes you need and so on and so forth this site allows you to cheat and I just realized this is using the HTML5 HTML5 boilerplate huh. interesting anyway sorry got a bit sidetracked then um, now what this does is see this big grey box here okay this has your uh, this is box has all this code running on it all the code that's in different colors is running on it all of it's blued out isn't okay now what you can do is ten this is your element you've got on your page now you can go right I want rounded corners on it but I want my box to have infinitely rounded corners on it okay there we go it's created the code for you um, do you know what yeah I'm going to have a box shadow but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so let's make it uh, there we go nice glowing effect there and box gradient mmm no nah, watch you yeah I'll have the box gradient on uh, box RGBA no box rotate yeah let's rotate a little bit mm, seven and a half degrees make it 25 yeah, 25 degrees also anyway, as you go through get it to how you want your element on your site to look and then anything that's coloured, click copy to clipboard, clip, uh, copy to clipboard, paste it in your CSS file, or go via this site, keep pasting it in, build it up, and generate to SAS. And then there you go. You got, if you notice, you got all the prefixes, all the filters, zooms, everything is all set there. There's pieces in here that I didn't even know you could do. Okay. Uh, oh, shows you bits of other pieces and pieces that you can do. Uh, let's scale that, let's rotate it that way a bit. There you go, let's, you can do other bits and pieces like that. Here's the code for you. It can cut down your production time so quick, it's always been added to. Well worth checking out. <sighs> so that's all the on computer stuff. Now, one of the things I've brought to use when I'm this is basically when I'm coming up with the concept for a design and I can't live without is a pen tablet okay now if you're going to be doing a lot of image work I fully suggest you get a pen tablet uh, the accuracy levels on them and just the control you can have is crazy now the pen tablet I've got is made by Wacom and it's known as the bamboo pen it's a basic plain simple pen tablet it's as simple as they get but the quality of it is unbelievable um, just for the simple facts of things like um, the pen itself doesn't contain a battery so you're not, never going to be there wondering is today the day my battery's going to run out you know you're not going to be there in the middle of drawing something and your battery's going to die and that's it you ruined your whole image okay the the way it picks up about what you're doing uh, it detects the pen and stuff like that it's so superior to other tablets and all Wacom products are like that so 
if you are someone who, I say, does do a lot of things, a lot of image work, um, or uses, say, Photoshop to not throw together your concepts for your site, stuff like that, I wholeheartedly fully suggest you buy, you know, you buy yourself a pen tablet. Um, I mean, I brought mine. I got mine second hand from um, a pawnbroker's, and it was like forty pounds. Uh, you can get pen tablets from as little as twenty pounds, I think. Um, I think you, in America, I don't know how much you can get them for. Probably about the same, uh, about twenty, thirty dollars. I think you can get a cheap pen tablet, but I fully suggest you get hold of one. But when you do get one, I suggest go for what you can afford. Okay go for the best that you can afford this is the way it is I mean they do get crazy the Wacom tablets um, if I can just show this one you can get ones that have like uh, you get, uh, touch uh, control stuff like that so you can use the pen but you can also run your fingers on it it detects that it, it, I, I can't sing their praises enough for Wacom I like to point out they do not sponsor me. None of these people sponsor me at all. If they did, I wouldn't mind. But uh, no one at all sponsors me. Um, I chose to use this equipment that I use, these tools, and I use them because I love them to bits. It's what I use. So I suggest if you do do a lot, invest. So that's the tools I use. Now, reference stuff you want to learn there is various different things that I use to learn okay one of them see there is some PHP involved hey uh, one of them is a php.net site okay uh, I always, always check it out every so often just keep myself up to date with what's coming up with PHP what news coming out new ways of writing bits of code um, new features they're adding functions things like that but then also you can also use it as a reference guide for bits of information you may forget. So, you know, uh, let's see the date function. This I keep do actually come back to this quite a lot for the date function. When you're using the date function, um, there is, as you may be aware, loads of different kind of letter coding you put in, how you want to display what aspects of the date, time, things like that. Uh, I'll go to php.net and you can see they've got this lovely chart it, sh it shows you what letter you need to type gives you a description of what it does and gives you a demo of how it looks and that, you know days, weeks, months, years, time, time zones all that kind of stuff uh, people also give you, give you examples uh, there's a great support network on here but you know if you're struggling to figure out something this can normally tell you what to do. Uh, let's have a look at mail. There you go, you get an introduction, uh, how to configure it, uh, demos, how to use it, and so on. So it's always worth going and give it a good check out every so often. Just keep yourself up to date. So that's for the PHP. CSS. I like CSS tricks. CSS tricks.com, I'd like point out. This is a website by uh, a guy called Chris Coyer. Uh, he works for a company called uh, Wufu, or they're now called Survey Monkey. Survey Monkey, sorry. Oh god, that sounded so bad then. Uh, he now works for a company called Survey Monkey. Now, CSS Tricks is his um, thing he does on the side. Um, it's an absolutely unbelievable resource of knowledge to do with CSS uh, web design um, he's forever posting article, articles I mean the last article to be posted was what's the date today today's the fifth last article to be posted was two days ago okay um, he's been busy at the moment so he hasn't been able to post as much but you know can't knock him for it um, he also does CSS Tricks uh, screencast where he talks you through lots of information 
uh, lots of demos, uh, tutorials, things like that. Um, he admittedly hasn't posted them for a little while. That's not me. I really go at him. I realise he's a busy guy, but he's. I've learnt so much from watching this guy's screencasts. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm just glancing because I know he did do. Uh, where is it? There you go. He's in a more comprehensive version intro to Compass SAS. Yeah, go and check it out. Uh, he's a lovely guy. Um, yeah, I can't say enough. Um, forums on there, highly useful forums. Uh, there's nice, there's quite a nice community on there that will always help you out. Uh, there is code snippets. Uh, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, WordPress code snippets. Uh, he's got an almanac. Oh, no. I'm still building that one. He's got a gallery of things he's liked, um, suggested downloads of bits and pieces, whether it be bits of code, stuff like that. And he usually has some uh, discount deals on there, which he's organised with some companies. Like Media Temple and stuff like that. So, if you need help with CSS, I suggest you go and check him out. Um, get him on, add him on your Twitter, and uh, say hello to him. You know, <laughs> if you ask where he came from, don't actually say it was me. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, check him out. He's always good. Next, we got uh, Hot Scripts. Now. Hot Scripts uh, is a script resource. Okay, um, they do have a forum as well, which is useful for help. But uh, the main reason I'd come here, you know, it's like sometimes you're getting towards a deadline, and then your boss or the client turns around and goes, "Oh, sorry, can you just add me this feature? Can you uh, add me um, you know, uh, an image gallery?" Okay, and you're there going, oh god, I've got two days left. I've got to turn around an image gallery. Little cheat, come to Hot Scripts, and you'll see here they've got a massive resource. Um, all different versions: Ajax, Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, PHP, HTML5, stuff like that. Go through. So let's click on the PHP. So what they got in there at the moment? They categorise it. So scripts and programs. Let's have a look what we've got here. And here you go, massive list of all these different things, uh, categories of stuff that programs and scripts that people have written in PHP. So let's have a look. Um, let's go with the image gallery. So there we go. You see, they've got 308 available. Let's click on that. And here you go. Um, there is some you're meant to pay for, uh, and there is free ones on there as well. Go through, have a look which ones you like, download the script, make sure you rate it, there you go, you got your script. You got your image gallery, your boss is happy, your client's happy, you look like you look amazing because you've done it in zero time. Okay? So hot scripts, I always have it there just as that emergency backup because you never know when something is going to be added to your jobs list at the last minute. You know, uh, I had a client not too long ago who decided at the last second uh, when the, like literally I had three hours to go before the site was due to go live um, and he turned around to me and goes oh can you put me an audio player on the site because um, you know I've got some mp3 recordings uh, and I want them to be out there bam on this I managed to do it in half now <laughs> may have accidentally charged him a little bit extra but sh we don't tell him that one but yeah um, it's always there. It's a great bailout thing. One of the things I do say though is when you do download something off here on the scripts, take time to learn it. Okay. I mean, don't just automatically come here, download this, download that, download this, download that. Oh, there's my site built. Because if something goes wrong, you don't know what the hell you're doing. It's someone else's script in the day. Take time to go through it, have a look at it, and learn it. Because then in the future. 
when you you may be building an image gallery in the future and you've got more time to do it and you may be there thinking oh I'd like to do this but I don't know how you've got that script there that you've downloaded that they may do that feature if you took the time to go through and have a look at it look how they've done things you learn how to do it and then when you do that scenario comes up in the future and you need to do that feature you go oh yeah I know how to do that blah 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 blah, blah. type it in done okay always also make sure you rate people on this um, rate them honestly as well okay uh, it helps everyone else out in the community um, knowing what is good what is bad what's useful what's rubbish okay but art scripts is always there for a good bailout clause for those last minute emergencies next though moving on NetTuts or NetTuts Plus. Uh, NetTuts Plus is um, a very good site, basically. <laughs> I'm trying to think how to explain it. Um, it is just a massive tutorial site, hence the name Tuts. Um, go through. It's got tutorials on lots of different uh, things, like database, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, AJAX, so on and so forth. It has PHP, but you don't want to really go there, do you? You know. Um, loads of contributor, uh, contributors um, it is meant to be a premium service so some tutorials and um, articles and stuff you won't have access to unless you pay for the subscription but there is an, um, a plethora I can't believe I just used that word bloody hell a plethora of uh, tutorials on there that uh, are free they're fully open for everyone to look at, read up, and everything you want to know. Well worth checking out if you want to just expand your knowledge a little bit more. Uh, if there's something you're not quite sure about. So, there we go. That is my brief introduction to NetTuts. Right, moving on again. Now, you may remember me mentioning Chris Coyer from CSS Tricks. Chris Coyer is a busy guy. Because he also does this. ShopTalkShow.com or Shop Talk Show uh, is a audio podcast that he does with a guy called Dave Rupert, who's from Paravel Paravel Designs. Let me just double check the na name of that bloody company now. Uh, Dave Rupert. Oh come on! There you go. About page. Yeah, Dave Rupert from Paravel. Uh, they're a front-end uh, development firm uh, from Austin, Texas. Um, now, they this is a, a say an audio pod podcast where it's they talk shop. Uh, they talk about front-end and uh, web development, and do they do do a bit back-end and use interfacing stuff like that. Uh, listeners can uh, submit questions. Um, they most weeks they have a guest uh, on the show with them. Next one is uh, Jean Crawford, who's from unmatchstyle.com. Um, but then every so often they'll also do a rapid fire. A rapid fire show is literally is just pure question and answer back to back of questions that people have submitted to them. Uh, it's well worth listening to. Um, I get it every time it comes out um, you know when I'm on my way to somewhere I'll just whack in my earphones listen to it I can have it on in the background while I'm doing some work I've learned some bits and pieces from it um, there's some interesting debates come up from this show um, when it's broadcast live there is a live uh, chat as well available so there is a bit well, it's obviously it's offline at the moment so you can't really see it but it is a live, they do broadcast live as well as podcast um, and there is a live IRC chat on their site so you can talk to everyone else who's listening to the show uh, Chris and Dave are both always in that IRC chat uh, usually with their guest as well so you can you can hear it sometimes in the show where they'll be talking about something and someone has said something in the room and corrected them and they're like oh actually you're right there and they've gone and correct themselves 
it's quite funny to listen to. The two guys are really nice guys. They're so funny to listen to sometimes as well because they just they're basically what all the rest of us are. They're kind of a bit of geek. Um but no, it's a great show, great worth listening to. Um you know, it runs for like an hour. Um but it's worth checking out. Finally on to the last one. Uh this Photoshop user Photoshop user TV. Um it's made by uh Calby Media or Calby TV. It's a video screencast or video podcast, sorry, it's not a screencast, I must point that out. Um it's a weekly TV show, but they're on break at the moment, which is crammed full of tips and tricks and tutorials to do with Photoshop. Okay, they do do a bit about uh, Lightroom and Camera Raw. Now, I'd like to point out this moment, Kelby, uh, Scott Kelby, who's the guy who owns Kelby Media and Kelby TV, uh, he's a, a photographer. Now, everyone pretty much on this show is a photographer. It is, in a way, it is kind of more based towards the photographer a uh, photographic viewer but it is a photoshop uh, based show and you will learn lots of bits and pieces from it um, you'll learn how to exploit a lot of the tools in photoshop uh, you may not use photoshop and if that's the case I'm very sorry uh, for you um, but you know I do I love it um, and I love this uh, show as well because it, it's like hearted they're fun they're fun while they're doing it they mess around but they do teach you a lot of stuff I've learned crazy amounts from them on how to do certain little tricks certain little things that I didn't even knew I could do with Photoshop or how to do I've learned from them so well worth checking out so just go to calbytv.com forward slash photoshop user tv So yeah, that's Photoshop used to TV. Right, that is pretty much the end. So you'd probably be glad if you're still watching this point. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, that is this week's screencast. If it's sounding a bit disjointed at this moment in time, it's because I've just had to pause it because I've had a phone call. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But when you get a moment, Get over and check out my site, bhsowebdesign.com. Um, parts of the site are still under construction, um, and I'd like to point out actually, I'm in the middle of doing a full redesign of this site, so some of you may think it looks a bit corny, a bit cheesy, a bit crappy in some places. It is changing. It was something I kind of cobbled together quite quickly when I shouldn't have really, I should have spent more time. Okay. Um, on here I have got uh, templates available, uh, I've got my blog, I in my blog also have um, other little bits of tips uh, to do with uh, learning PHP, um, there are also some information about screencasts and just me rubbing on about bits and pieces. There's also my uh, video screencasts available for you to be able to watch and digest whether we play Ezra or Hatred, it's up to you. Um, and also you can, not tonight I'm necessarily tapping business, but you can hire me from here um, for all my different services that are available. Also you can check out my portfolio, which at the moment only has two sites on there. Some sites, the, uh, they've, the companies have just died a death, unfortunately. Um, it can't be helped. Uh, if you want to send me a message, use my contact form. Send me a message. If you want to tell me my uh, screencast is crap, feel free. Here's your opinion. If you want me to actually do a screencast on a particular topic or subject, let me know. Uh, I'll definitely do my best um, to to uh, help you in any way, shape, or form I can. Also, you can check me out on Twitter um, at uh, 
Blackhawk SO. Um, give us a follow. I'll make sure I, I usually make a point of following everyone back. Um, always available. So there we go. But uh, that's my screencast, and there we go. Until next time, see you around.